Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. Uh, let's go through the pages of a national daily. We call it Off the Press. And we have Upuna Bonko Tarier who joins the conversation. It's good to have you join us this beautiful Monday morning. Upuna Bonko Tarier. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Kopi. And good morning, Nigeria. Good morning. Okay, so uh, we we'll start off with the Nigerian Tribune. And as always, the top stories and the caption would be the focus. Six days to APC convention, uncertainty over delegate lists. Consensus unity list won't be acceptable to Buhari. Mustafa is quoted. Consent aspirant asks party leadership to postpone convention. And where does that leave the party? The ruling party ahead of the 2023 elections. Um, you also have another caption saying, Queen Elizabeth tests positive for COVID-19. Uh, that's been making the rounds. And just before then, you also have Nigeria content retains $8 billion annually and creates 50,000 jobs. Thousands of imported vehicles trapped at seaport over VIN uh, valuation. Uh, that's what you find. And just before uh, we take a, we move away from the Tribune, you also have medical professionals giving divergent views on COVID-19 vaccine production. NAVDAC impounds 120 tons of chemical laden uh, heat skin. That's also another one. And Oshun APC primaries, or Yetola uh, Ghana's 222,169 votes. Arek Beshola's man had 12,921 votes. And trouble in air transport as Nigerian air ways increases the fares you also have fare increase in other uh that's what the ncaa is quoted to say air travelers way road transport option as airlines attribute fare increase to hostile environment one hour flight now sells for fifty thousand naira to hundred thousand liter of jet a1 now jumps from 190 naira to 400 naira or 500 and this has been put out the reason for uh, you know, having that air uh, uh, fares being increased. 2023, no amount of intimidation can stop me. Uh, you have the former governor of Lagos State, Bola Ahmed, quoted on that uh, as he visited the Alafin and Ulubadon designate. That's the much we can take on the Nigerian Tribune this morning. Let's go straight to the leadership newspaper with these front page headlines. The big one there. Five days to go. PMB, APC governors take crucial decision on convention tomorrow. As parents, stakeholders kick against governor's anointed chairmanship candidate, insist on open contest, lament uncertainty of February 26 convention date. 2023, I'm ready to get get dirty with anyone, Tinubu warns. 2023, I'm ready to get dirty with anyone, Tinubu warns. I wonder what uh, uh, interpretation you would give to that. Humanitarian crisis looms in Niger over upsurge in IDPs. Humanitarian crisis looms in Niger over upsurge in IDPs. Ohaneze condemns Abia cattle market killings. Interesting one there. Ohaneze condemns Abia cattle market killings. Details on page six. Several vehicles trapped at Lagos ports over VIN policy. This is the vehicle identification number valuation policy introduced on all imported vehicles by the Nigeria Customs Service. Uh, any Hope in sight for the importance of such vehicles. Time will tell. Kanu APC, Ganduje pacifies Shekarao supporters. It's, it'd be interesting to know what or how he's pacified them or what he used in pacifying them. But let's not go um, into details. Top ISWAP commander, 21 others killed in airstrikes. Top ISWAP commander, 21 others killed in airstrikes. You can see a picture of the chief of, of air staff there. Uh, on the front page of the leadership newspaper, those are the stories coming from that newspaper. All right, uh, we move away from uh, the leadership newspaper this morning. Let's check out the Punch newspaper. Uh, looking at the front page of the Punch newspaper, you have convention, APC battles consensus crisis as Buhari governors meet Tuesday. 
State chapters confirm readiness awaits Boni's signal and chairmanship aspirin laments planned postponement. That's a lot going on in the APC right now. And I wonder where that leaves uh, them as the ruling party. Nigeria lost 2,038 lives to air crashes in 53 years, says the AIB. And you also have, we won't leave APC, Aragba Shola's group vows as Oyetola defects. And uh, another header says, anti Aragba Shola protests in Lagos, demonstrators berate the minister. And private depots high rate, more fueling stations may sell above 180 liter, 180 naira per liter. Uh, that's also another one right there. And talking about strike, Asu Neck converge on Abuja today to meet the federal government. Uh, well, that's it on uh, the punch. Inter paper. Interesting, Mercy. The picture is uh, on the front page of the punch. It looks like, I don't, I don't speak your but it looks like, is that rest in peace? Is that the meaning of what's on the <laughs> I, back I, of that? I saw there? all of that. And you can see a picture of a, a, a coffin there. Um, With well, Eric Weshola's I'm face. telling with his name and, and everything, maybe saying that uh, his political future has been buried. Well, time will tell. Interesting stories are coming on the front page of the, uh, the Daily Trust um, newspaper this morning. And they've taken uh, a different slant or different twist, a departure from what the other papers are looking at. And that, that, that thing that's commendable. Eight months after abduction, 13 Yaori schoolgirls married off to bandits. This is something that some people may have forgotten about. And they have a, an infographic timeline of uh, the Yaori um, uh, uh, abduction uh, right from June 17, 2021, where 80 students and five teachers were abducted from the FGC, the Federal Government College, Benin Yauri. And uh, it's something that I think uh, it's great that the Daily Trust is reminding us of. Let's quickly move on. Tons of uh, POMO uh, that can cause deadly diseases imported to Nigeria. Naflak, um, did you ever know that a POMO uh, is imported. Never knew that. Hard times for passengers as airlines raise fares by 100%. Nigerian airstrike targeting terrorists kill children in Niger uh, Republic. This is some stories coming from the Nigerian or Daily Trip Trust. APC to postpone convention over unresolved crisis. Uh, pregnant woman, eight others burned to death in Kwara road crash. Queen Elizabeth tests positive for COVID-19 and eight killed, 14 abducted as bandits attack Niger communities. We'd like to invite at this point a welcome uh, guest analyst, uh, Oponaboy Kotaria. Uh, Ms. Kotaria, thank you very much for your time and for your patience as well. Let's start with the uh, uh, the big story on the front page of, page of the Daily Trust uh, news about the abduction of uh, students, 80 students and five teachers from the Federal Government College in Berlin, Yari. It's um, almost uh, a year now. This is... Uh, uh, June 17, 2021, and now we're hearing that 13 of those girls have been married off uh, to bandits. Your thoughts on that? Uh, what do you expect me to say? 13 of the girls have been married off to bandits. It's expected and in sync with Islamic trans, uh, religion. You all agree with me that in Islam, you even get married at 13, 12, 13, 10. And uh, these uh, bandits are Muslim, you know, so they see nothing wrong with that. But it is a clear manifestation of the government's failure to protect lives and property, especially the government of President Muhammad Ubuad, who voted to protect lives and property and has advocated, refused to protect lives and property. We have, we have shared that responsibility. It is unfortunate that these girls who are in school, unlike most Muslims, most Northerners, especially the ladies, who don't see anything uh, important about education. These ones have realized the importance of education and have decided to go to school. Sadly, it has become their undoing the Albatros, and the government is doing nothing other than mounting past relevances and sanctimonious civilities. The government has done nothing to ensure the release of these adoptees. In fact, they are pregnant. What do they do? Not as if they have agreed to be pregnant, 
Not as if they willingly opened their legs for uh, this criminal, but they were probably raped. Not even probably, I believe that they were raped. And the uh, product of that rape, the result of that rape is pregnancy. What do you else do you want me to say? The summary is the federal government of President Muhammad Ibrahim has failed Nigeria security wise, politically, economically, and even socially. This is one government. When where did the balance of history shall be found one? We've been told that um, uh, three of these girls um, are pregnant, and the pregnant girls have been released uh, to uh, their parents. Uh, so what you've said is really uh, the, the way it is in terms of rape and sexual assault. Um, of course, if they are married off, it's not expected that they'll be there, they won't be touched. Uh, it's really sad and worrying, um, and uh, I shudder when Why I think of... Why is this happening? Yes, yes, this happening? yes, yes. Indeed. Let's look at the um, uh, the prospect of postponing the APC National Convention over unresolved crisis, as uh, um, the Daily Trust newspaper put it. Um, APC to postpone convention over unresolved crisis. Apart from the, the Daily Trust, you have the punchy stick at the punchy newspaper saying convention. Yeah, AP, the media, APC the media is a wash. Is a wash. Yeah, this is something that um, this is what we live for. We live on or we live for um, such uh, stories. APC battles consensus crisis as uh, Buhari governors meet on Tuesday. Uh, what's your take on on, on the uh, the role of the governors and sort of the kickback against uh, the governors' move? Uh, to have their way. Well, let me talk of my opinion on the issue of the government. It's a normal thing. I mean, uh, the government will always want to force their their opinions, their views, and their ways on Nigeria. The governors are very powerful in this part of the country. In fact, in most cases, they exceed their grief. They exceed their powers. They go beyond their powers because the system allows them to, to do so. So, uh, the government, and I strongly believe that Buhari is lethargic when it comes to what happened to the APC and after his uh, presidency. Because the man is silent. He's not bothered at all. You can see him moving from one country to the other, even when those journeys are completely unnecessary. Completely unnecessary. You see him traveling. Like I said here on this program, uh, was it last week or the week before, I said the man is trying to catch up. You know, when he was a military head of state, uh, he didn't have the time to go Trump. So this is another opportunity. And realizing that this is the very last opportunity, he can go Trump. Using the federal government finances. That's exactly what he's doing. Because most of these journeys are complete. You could send your lieutenant, but he wants to go. So he's not really interested in, I don't think he's interested in who succeeds him. But the governors are. Because most of them want to succeed the president. Those that are not interested in succeeding the president want to ensure that they are, they are uh, how will I put it, those that they believe they trust, because in politics you actually trust no one, those they believe they trust should be in position, in power, so that they can continue to enjoy the paraphernalia or the perks of power. That is what is going on right now. And so they want to ensure, some are talking of consensus candidates, now, most of the governors are saying consensus candidates. The consensus candidates will be there in their own image. That's the whole essence of a consensus candidate. We'll be there to protect them. We'll be there to ensure that even when they are out of office, that their interests have been protected. That is why a lot believe in consensus candidates. Those that are back to consensus candidates are saying no, because they know that the consensus candidate might not be the candidate that is generally acceptable. Therefore, the consensus candidate will definitely, um, how will I put it, protect the interests of a microscopic few. That's what the call. I told them, I say no, we don't want a consensus candidate. Let us get somebody that will be there in the image of everybody. And that is the, that is the problem. Even Bumi is part of the problem. This is a committee that was set up to last for six months. Six months to one year. Uh, one year, how I many? Almost two years now. So Bumi is even part of the problem. He pretends to address the problem, while in actual fact he is part of the problem. Because I don't see why it would be difficult for the Bumi led committee to take a decision. The man has been uh, vaccinated.
Let it. You know, he has a schizophrenic personality. And, but most importantly, trying to see how whatever his uh, antics are, how he's going to benefit from it. If it's possible for him to emerge as the vice presidential candidate in the next general election, or if it's possible for him to even emerge as the presidential candidate. That is the problem with Bumi. Bumi's problem has nothing to do with addressing sincerely the issues of APC. Bumi's problem has to do with protecting and projecting his own interest. That is the bane of the party. Not leaving the devil has his own agenda. And that is the bane of the party. And now they are trying to see. Don't forget, this is a party that melded into what? Parties, parties, different parties that melded into what? And so they don't have the same ideology. They don't have the same belief. They don't have the same paradigm of operation, models, models of operation, nothing. The major aim of coming together was to oust the Jonathan administration. And having achieved that, now you begin to see the features in the party, a lot of schism in the party, and how to reconcile the differences has become a problem. Because they all came with mindset. Let us get this man out. Now, the jo Jonathan is out. PDP is out. The next battle was, how do we ingratiate ourselves with Mr. President? How do we need to fall to the It has not to do with party. It is not an individual. How do we ensure that Mr. President, how do I, not me, how do I ensure that Mr. President will love me and hand over to me? So it is as it has really has nothing to do with whether the APC is going to win the next election or not. It really has to do with whether the individual will win the next election or not. But you cannot, because there is no independent candidate, so you have to write on the back of the APC, and that is why you speak talk of APC. Or that APC will, will long have been dead. Because right now it's an ego back. It is not a party back. But when they came together, it was a party back. Now it's an ego back. Now they realize that they came from ACS, they came from, they came from CTC, they came from this and that. So that is why you have this schism in the party. Okay, okay. Uh, because uh, they are not fighting in the interest of the party. And uh, the government have yeah. the financial model. They have that financial model. And Mr. they are making use of that financial model. You are using what you have yes. to get what you want. Let, let's, see, let's see if the, 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 the convention will hold. Yeah, let's Sorry. see the convention will hold in the in the next six days. Of course, and um, when the PDP, uh, the PDP managed to hold his own convention, um, the new chairman at you threw a challenge to the APC to hold their own convention. You know, predicting that they wouldn't be able to hold it, and uh, that challenge is still is still there. What they call it a bet. It's still open. It's still there. But um, another story coming on several of the page papers, including the Nigerian Tribune. Happens to be uh, uh, Oshun APC primaries. So Oyotela Ghana's 222,169 votes. Arabe Shalaz man got uh, a paltry uh, 12,921 votes. That seems like a political whitewash. Your thoughts on that? Well, uh, I, did, I, I, I wasn't surprised uh, with the outcome of that. That's a sitting government. I, I don't really, I'm not really seized of the facts. But from the snippet of information gathered, uh, the sitting government is performing. You know? And uh, although the performance of the governor is not the barometer in Nigerian policy, the yardstick in Nigerian policy is, what is the governor a generous man, and you know what it means, being generous. You know? Uh, so, is this spreading the like this? Probably he is. Yeah. But I don't really want to pontificate. I don't really want to speak on the issue. I don't have grasp. Okay. You know? But I, what I gather, like I said, from the snippet of information cobbled together, it is obvious that the government is performing and he has outperformed around the solar. So he's being loved by the people. But that notwithstanding, the man has the box. He has the box. <laughs> and every traditional ruler, when they say this traditional ruler, they say, uh, we love this government. No, they don't love it. But they are scared <laughs> of being dethroned. They are scared of being maligned. They are scared of being marginalized. How do they love it? Tomorrow, All right, open up all in Qataria. Let's uh, quickly... Yes. Uh, let's just quickly uh, look and at this. Won, won, anyway. It's expected. <laughs> it's a city government with all the power to win. 
Yeah. All right. I, I'm, sure that, I, I, I'm sure that someday we will talk about the powers yeah. of uh, incumbent governors uh, in our politics because. Uh, it's enormous, enormous in this country. Enormous <laughs> in this country. Okay, quickly. So, so let's also stay with the Nigerian Tribune. On this one, it talks about the trouble in air transport as Nigerian airlines increase the fares. And you have the NCC or NCAA saying that this fare increase is in order. And some people are saying, I mean, you have the fact that uh, uh, one hour flights now sells for like 50,000 naira to about 100,000 naira. And this has been blamed on a liter of the Jet A1, which has now jumped from 190. We're talking about the fuel, I mean, the aviation fuel now, to 400 and 500 naira. What are your thoughts? You're not going to blame, um, I would like to call them those that own planes. There, there's a word for them. You're, you're actually not going to blame the industry because uh, they are in there for business. That's the truth about it. They don't have planes and put them into commercial use because they love you or because they love Nigeria. They are in there for business. Even the Nigerian uh, ethics, I'm very sorry to mention, I shouldn't have, but anyway, who said he was going to evacuate? Nigerians from South Africa when we have that democratic crisis. <laughs> Not really. He did that for a purpose. He did that for a purpose. So the truth about it is that if the, aggression, if the price of the aggression fuel has gone up, definitely the price of the fares will go. It is natural. There is nothing you can do about it. Because if, for example, a litre of the aggression fuel before now was 100 naira and the fare before now was 20 naira, for example. They must have done the calculation that by the time we get the money from social number of persons, and by the time we spend whatever we're going to spend on entertainment and so on, on plane and pay my, our staff and so on, we are going to make a profit of 10 naira. Now the price of the aviation world has gone. They cannot retain that same, maintain that same price. Flight ticket, uh, the first price, it's not possible. They will run as a law. And if they run as a law, they will stop. If they stop, we're also going to be affected. They're in there they for business. So it's simple, it's simple business, business thinking. I'm not going to blame them. Rather, you're going to blame the government. Because the government's failure to ensure the provision of the aggression fuel at a cheaper rate, which is extremely possible, with our refineries and so on, is the problem. That's not to do with the aggression, the aggression industry. It has to do with the government. The government has failed in its economic policy. And it is only reflected on every segment of the economy, including the aggression industry. That's what is going on. So you cannot blame, please extricate the owner of the industry from this blame. And let the government be the scapegoat. It's as simple as that. The government has failed. Completely failed. Okay, interesting. Yeah, open up in Kutare. Let's let's uh, go over to our ASU segment. At least uh, every program on, on the media these days will have something to talk about um, uh, ASU. Um, we hear that the National Executive Committee of uh, the Academic Staff Union of Nigerian Universities has converged on Abuja. That's uh, the way the papers are putting, particularly the Punch newspaper. They use the word converged on Abuja uh, today to meet with the federal government. Um, do you expect anything good to come out of um, um, of Nazareth. <laughs> well, you just said it, you by explaining the climate of Nazareth. Well, you just said it, <laughs> you stole the thunder by saying Nazareth. <laughs> well, I know you're just trying to, to be biblical. Yeah, but uh, I haven't said that. I haven't said that. You know, I impugn the sincerity of the, of this, uh, 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 the, the actual official. You know, last week, I said, students might even protest. I think I was uh, forecasting, and the students protested. <coughs> we are not worried about us going on track. But the truth is, the sincerity of us, especially the officials of us, like the president, 
You are going to meet. This is not the first time you are meeting with the government. It's not the second time you are going to meet with the government. It's not even the first time. You know, last week too, I said it. When they meet, they now the accounts get a lot or envelopes are tax proud, and that is it. They tell you, oh, we have this and understanding. We are calling. You know, I said this last week. Why are you meeting with the government? Oh, what else? I mean, it, 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 it's, 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 it's to negotiate or to discuss the implementation <laughs> no, of that please, renegotiated excuse me, agreement. Excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> Kofi, Kofi, you are playing the devil's advocate. I agree with you. But why are you meeting with the government? What are you expecting to come out of that meeting different? Nothing. Because nothing new shall be said. The demands have remained the same. I didn't listen to that. He said the demands have remained the same. The government has always. Now I say, I call you when I mean you, I'm talking about you. Because I don't believe that the government is really completely. The actual men are just collecting some money, keep quiet, and when they exhaust that money, they go and catch it. The, the, the demands are there. It's simple. We are not good to me. We've met over 10 times. And over a period of how many years? We are not going to meet. Meet those demands. If you meet at least 60% of the demands, then we'll meet because we now know that you're serious. What are you going to meet the next people? What are you going to meet government for? Are you going to come up with the next people? That's why these people are not serious. When they are broke, they're with this country now, they are broke, they're thinking about next month. They're thinking about the federal line in their pockets. The actual chairman and the executive, we are next month, let me not say something. Let me not say something. I am angry because the students and parents are suffering. They are suffering for this stupid act, act of strike as well. We all encourage uh, that we all engage this strike. Because we thought that I should make it. We thought it was the interest of the universities. But for one education, it is not. It's a, it's a starting strike. Why is it the middle of the first problem? The minister said he was not even aware that Asu has gone on track. And you have a minister like that. That was the last of the government on this country. He's not aware. Why would he be aware when you'll be drinking tea and maybe probably marry the new he, he see, no, what, 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 what the Minister of Labour was saying What the Minister of Labour was saying was that um, <laughs> No, uh, Mr. Mr. Guterria, Mr. Guterria, what, what what? Not, what? Excuse me, he's not one man to be trusted. Let me, uh, he's the Minister for Labour. Yeah, yeah. And he has been negotiating with Asu. Yeah. And he has come out of it. No, Every but. Every man should resign. If you reach an agreement with Asu, and even if Mr. President truncates it or frustrates that, you resign. Mr. Mr. Kutara, in, in defense of. What are you going to do in meeting with Asu? Mr. Kutara, in defense of uh, uh, Senator, sir, sorry, well, sorry, open up, open up, please, please. In the in defense of uh, um, Senator Doctor uh, Chris Singiye, and what he said was that based on the current framework of agreements with ASU, each time they want to embark on an industrial action, they want to go back to the trenches, as as it were, or back on strike, they meant to inform. The, the the negotiating you know the bodies including the uh, interreligious uh, council uh, you know uh, and, and inform the minister you know in writing that oh uh, since you could not but they did not submit that letter to him you know you tell me there is no time you tell me there is no time go from here to stop history what is the reasonableness in that we will reach an agreement to fail to fulfill your own part then you now also tell me, each time I want to go on strike or I want to react, I should also inform you the enemy that I want to. Is that not stupid? Why do you have to wait for me to inform you? Why not fulfill your own part of the agreement? Why do you have to wait for me for, 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 for the time I will react for religion? Why do you have to wait for that time? We agree that you are going to implement all these things within a, a particular period. Let's say six months. One month, two months, three months, four months, five months, and you're saying I should inform you. What that stupidity is that? <laughs> I to tell my enemy that I am going to attack you. Is that not madness? And when I told you, on so, you, we both agree that on between now and then, 
you are going to meet my demand. You fail. Because you not going to me. But the artist is also compliant. The artist is doing so because they are enjoying it. They don't trust me, the executives. I'm telling you the truth. There must be something. There is more going than in the act. What, 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 what kind of problem is going to have with them? It's simple. I am not going to meet with you until you prevail at least 50% of the agreement. 50%. We are talking about demand. It's demand from agreement. Because from demand, you move to agreement. Agreement, we've reached consensus. There is consensus added there. We've reached a consensus. Now it's time for implementation. Then you fail. I decide to reform you again. Then the minister said that. So that by the time they reform, they will now have this meeting that they are having. I will not be with action. Then the envelopes will go around. Then they say, okay, after the meeting, we have reached the consensus. They will do this. And don't worry, we are now postponing. We are suspending the time. I'm scared. I'm going to walk. <laughs> so you feel, you feel this, this is, um, is, a, this is a, an exercise to just get some brown over as well? Yes, I'm going to go and go. I'm going to go and go. And that's why they are talking about strike. Their governments are broke. They are playing on the intelligence of their other members. Other members should please keep this human beings out of office and elect fresh ones. All right, you know? all right, all right. Let, let, let's quickly share this. your thoughts on. Okunabo, but this is actually not on uh, the pages this morning, but it's also, you know, national discourse. The fact that you have about 26 civil society organizations coming to protest the rework of the electoral bill and giving the president, you know, some days, uh, you know, to actually sign out into law. And what that actually leaves us, will this protest make any impact? Is the protest necessary? Um, let's quickly have you share your thoughts on this one. Well, we seem to have a, a poor connection of a lost connection with Okunabon Kutara, who is a public affairs analyst. And he's been making sense of some of the top headlines this morning on our national dailies. However, we are also being concerned about the fact that you have the electoral uh, reworked electoral bill that hasn't been given us and by the president and you have civil society organization in their numbers about 26 of them coming together quite impressive a lot of persons have asked uh, the value of this uh, civil society organization how they have fed and what they have been doing what have been up to but the big question here is what difference will he make? I mean, the protest, the protesting and asking that the president should give assent. Will this force the hand of the president to assent to this bill? And where does this leave us as a country as regards, you know, our electoral act and the reforms of our elections ahead of the 2023 elections? Uh, there's a lot that needs to be done. But yeah. I, I, re <laughs> I know that you're also one of those proponents, one of those persons who constantly question the activities of civil society. 26 um, of them would be out uh, there. I, I, I if do. not today or thereabout. I do. <laughs> I think so. I, I, because I think that's that news. <laughs> that's news. We should put you on the, on the 9, 9 a.m. news because I'm not aware I do. I mean, we are, we are civil society. You are civil society. I'm civil society. You know, so for me to question, you know, so, I mean. No, so you you have this one to where, I mean, I think that you're trying to be politically correct very here, but it's okay, I understand I that fact. But my point about. is you have a group of persons who have come together, they have a name, they have a face, they have an identity, and they have I, been. I am part of civil society, Mercy. You are part of, <laughs> if you're not part, I am part of civil society. Mm. Yes. So, so the question now is, with the protest that's going to go out, I mean, uh, they're going to be converging at the, Unity Center in okay, Abuja, Unity, Unity Fountain, Fountain in Abuja, yeah. oh, yes, wow. uh, mm -hmm. demanding that the president give accent to that electorate. Do you think that this would actually yield any result? Yeah, I don't know where the two days uh, ultimatum started from yesterday or today, you know, but usually uh, the ultimatum should come with a, a threat, like if um, you don't, we will, you understand. So it should be like um, CSOs uh, will say we would, or they'll do ABC. So what, what's, the, what's the aftermath? Because if there's nothing be after it, then it means that, um, uh, I mean, the president may not be, may not feel the heat. But but it's interesting. I mean, uh, February 18 was meant to be the deadline uh, as far as ANEC is concerned, because they need 365 days, you know, um, of, of preparations, of announcements and all that. The calendar, the electoral calendar timetable uh, should run for about 365 days. And they had intended to have a election proper general elections next year on february 18. now today it's gone past uh you know uh, uh february 18 2022 we're at february 21 which means they've lost 
some days, 18, 19, 20, 21, three days. So, I mean, it's, um, it's, I think it's long overdue that, that civil society organizations ask for, for this to be, to be um, quickly attended to by Mr. President. Uh, the bill is on the table of Mr. President. The bill is on his table, right? It's on his table, the reworked electoral act amendment bill. It's on his table. So what is the, um, the delay for? Uh, we hear that, you know, the first time the bill went to him, he sent it to the Honorable Minister of Justice and Attorney General, uh, Abu Bakr Malami SAN, who gave a legal advice indicating that um, he shouldn't sign that bill because of certain things that were placed there um, by the National Assembly members. Now, don't forget before uh, that, you know, bill was returned to the National Assembly, uh, we had the governors from both parties, by the way, who were, were lobbying Mr. President. And um, uh, Senate President um, had to, Ahmed Lawan had to make his uh, ceremonial visit to the Asurok Villa to meet with Mr. President as well. Maybe to try and, you know, convince the President to sign based on the pressure that was being put on him by the governors. And he came out of um, the, the meeting to his ceremonial position where the press is always waiting for him to address them. So, so it's been a, a sort of a, 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 a war of wits, let's call it a war of wits between uh, the, the governors and uh, the National Assembly members. Um, of course, the governors probably would have been happy um, that some of the clauses that were inserted, including um, um, the fact that um, uh, the, go the governors could not determine you know, who would be the next, uh, the candidates. It had to be the direct primaries you know, uh, format or, or, or option that was inserted. That was taken away, you know. But it, the, the National Assembly members still put in something there. Apart from direct primaries, now you have direct primaries, indirect primaries. A they, consensus. Yes, they put in, the, the consensus was not there initially Before from the, the, from the Senate, mm -hmm. yes. But the President was the one who mentioned consensus in an interview he had, um, I think was with one of the television stations. I don't know if it's Plus TV, I forgot one of those stations, I can't remember. But um, anyway, the President mentioned consensus. And in the House of Representatives um, version, you had the consensus uh, option there. While in the Senate question, you didn't have that. So they have what you call a conference committee, which is a committee that sits down to make sure that they both have a harmonized bill to send back to the president. can send two versions. And so the, Nash, the Senate adopted that uh, consensus option. Now it's there, but that's not all. Um, they've put, they put there that if you want to pick a consensus candidate, um, all the other candidates must agree. agree uh, with the and, Yes, in writing, in writing. And also, they put it there that if you are a political appointee, you must resign your appointment before um, you can contest any office, which is something they normally do. But the governors have, I don't know if, if they're still angry or my, my, my concern, this. My concern in all of you this know. is the fact that, you know, the president had actually promised a reform. Uh, talking about uh, bringing reforms that will actually strengthen our democracy and you know give Nigerians hope to trust the electoral process and the system. Uh, let's not also forget the fact that over time you have uh, trust deficiency or trust deficit, however you want to put it, because the people over time have lost trust in the entire process. And that's also a major reason why you have uh, political apathy when you have the elections. People don't show up during elections. Um, the question now would be how many persons have their PVC? Do you have your PVC? And why don't you have your PVC? Because people just feel that, you know, it's the same story. We're just going to go in circle. It's same old, same old. Nothing is going to change. These persons are going to definitely bring who is going to be on board. So I think that the president should you know, beyond party lines. Because I also remember that there's a statement that's accredited, that's been uh, accredited to the president that says, I belong to nobody, I belong to everybody. And so uh, national interest should be number one. And if we're looking at electoral reforms, because the president should be remembered for this, although you begin to ask yourself, uh, with all of our laws and what have you, the implementation level also would also be you know, a major issue. INEC on its own has a lot of roles to play. We've seen several elections that has happened in 2022, a few of them, and prior to 2022, issue of logistics seemed to be a great one. So, but there's a lot. And if President Mohammed Buhari had promised Nigeria that there would be electoral reforms that would strengthen the entire process of election and, and enable that, ensure that the people trust the system and what stops him, whatever it is, he's the president. Whatever clause, whatever thing that it is, the president should ask. I, I don't know how effective the process, it's okay that we have some civil society organizations and we have all of these uh, pressure groups that are out there, mounting pressure, but to what, to what extent, to what difference would he make? It probably would just be another show off on the streets. Would he force the president's hand to assent 
into it and how many how much more time do we still have until we have that bill become a reality and not not necessarily that bill is very important because of the critical element yes necessarily there are some things that would actually help the yes. entire process but mostly everyone's looking at the issue of transmitting uh, you know results electronically and that's the key thing so the president should, should I don't know what's stopping the president from signing this. I really don't know what's going on. But let's see how this actually pans out for Nigerians. I mean, with the fact that um, the pressure group, the civil society, like you and I, are on top of the game and saying, hey, Mr. Yes. President, you need to do this now. We're yes. reminding yeah, you of your promises. I, I, I just want to quickly add, because uh, we're, we're almost out of time, that um, um, we, we're used, we're used to, uh, in, this, in, this, in this part of the world, in this country, spending government money to commission reports. And then when we commission those reports, <laughs> We don't implement those reports. And when Yaradua was elected as president in 2017, the late Umar Musa Yaradua, he did admit that the election that brought him to power was flawed. And he was committed to reforming the electoral, electoral process in Nigeria. And he uh, enlisted uh, former Chief Justice of Nigeria, Mohamed Owais, and uh, a committee under Mohamed Owais called the Owais Committee to, um, to look into uh, and make recommendations regarding re reforms in the Nigerian electoral uh, uh, process and system. And that committee came out with a report called the Uwes Report. All right, the Uwes Report. And that, that report has been sitting in Nassau Villa gathering dust. Some of the co co recommendations of the Uwes Report include constitutional amendments that will insulate INEC from the political influences of the executive arm of government in terms of its composition and funding. And this is a major problem. Uh, the part and point, for instance, an INEC board uh, was to be transferred from the um, the executive, that's the president, to the National Judicial Council. Several recommendations on uh, containing the Ruiz report that uh, was was groundbreaking, and um, it's not been implemented. You know the functions of the police on election duty, a lot of things there. You know election petitions and and all that. What is happening, uh, Mr. President Mohamed Wai? What is happening? to the Uwes report and the civil society organization as well. We've all been in, you know, it, you know, uh, taken away by this electoral act of many people. That's, that's good, but what about the Uwes report? That's, that's a big question that um, should be asked. Government's taxpayers' money was spent to, to put that up. We have to go, merci. Um, following, we can't get up on our back, I'm told, so we have to move on. Definitely, and that's the size of, uh, of the press review. We'll definitely return with of the press tomorrow, and the time for the entire show would be 7 o'clock up until 9. We'll stop on the breaks right now and tell you what happened today in history, and after then, it will be time for a first major conversation, all things Binicor. Please stay tuned.